Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode. So today in our little look at open computers, we're going to have a look at um, servers, racks, RAID arrays and a few other bits and pieces like that that simply don't exist in computer craft. But they're very, very cool. Uh, basically, they're, they're sort of beefed up computers that can do a little bit more. Um, to start off with using them, you'll get a, um, a rack box. And this contains slots for four, four different servers. Now, servers, once again, like pretty much everything else, come in different tiers. Uh, we'll ignore the creative one and there's also a special one called a terminal server and we'll deal with that one shortly So with your server You take it put it in the box and you can see it here and As you can see compared to even a tier 3 case We can hold a lot more stuff here. We've got uh, instead of like a tier 3 and a tier 2 disk, we've got four tier 3s, four tier 3 memories, um, processor, two tier 3 cards, two twos, and some things called component buses. And we'll deal with those in a minute. So as you can see, you know, the, the servers are a lot more powerful than a, a normal computer. So we'll just grab some bits and pieces and uh, load this thing up and... Do 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 do. Okay. Uh, screen we're going to put here. Oh, I've done a little bit of wiring change. Um, the relays that I was using, I found weren't transferring power fast enough, and this computer was having occasional problems where it just didn't have enough power to run. So what I've done is I've separated all the computers using the power distribution modules. Underneath all of them, you can see capacitors down here for power storage so that the you know if power gets cut off here all the computers will still run for a while off the capacitors and that's all d divided up now these things do stop network traffic as well as everything else so I'm just going to use wireless networking in order to to send messages between different computers so down here, and we'll put our stuff in the rack. I've got a hard drive that I've already installed OpenOS on. I've got some memory. Good. An EEPROM. A tier 3 graphics card. A wireless network card. And a special card called a linked card. Now with wireless networking, with normal networking, cable networking, you can communicate as far as the cables connect, so long as everything's loaded. Wireless networking this one here it'll transmit but not like computer craft computer craft will transmit you know you can basically pick up a signal anywhere on the server with um, the wireless modems in this they have a specified range um, I think the defaults about 400 blocks um, beyond that you'll have to use computers to relay messages backwards and forwards and and other things like that um, the the way around that limitation, like because I've got to place um, a second base which is quite some distance away. Oh, let's see now, let's have a look at my waypoints and see how far away it is. Here we go, 519. So it's a little bit out of the range of stuff in this room. Um, but what you can do is you can use a thing called a linked card. All right, it's a tier three card. It's a bit like it works a bit like a network card but a very special kind. This thing will send a message between it and its um, its partner. So let's go and find a linked card, a linked card, a linked card. Here we go. You see, you do the crafting recipe and you actually end up with two of them and they're linked to each other. So if I want to talk to multiple, um, multiple remote sites, I'm going to need to devise some means of distributing packets to computers that are you know, linked off elsewhere and, and stuff like that. But I only need one linked card, I've only got one remote base. So that's all good. Now, that's almost up and running, but if I turn this on, nothing comes up on the screen. And the reason for that is, like even though that's that's happily running now, 
And the reason for that is because this server, it hasn't been told how to connect to the screen. Right? So if I click on the, on the rack itself, you can see I can see my server and these funny little cables and you know lines and all of that kind of thing. Um, and there's a different colour for the bottom side, the top side, the back, the right and the left. And if I want this first server to be able to communicate with the screen which is connected to the back, what I have to do is I have to go server 1 and we're looking for the back colour which is yellow. Click that here. And now, if I turn it on, there you go. It can now communicate. Now, there's a bit of a, of course, there's a bit of a restriction because you know if you put four servers in here all trying to talk to the same screen, you're going to have problems. Uh, you can come up with strange arrangements with screens and other bits and pieces on all four sides and other stuff like that. It's a bit messy. Now, the main reason you might use servers and racks and things like that is you know, a couple of these computers I will have um, jobs for, little bits and pieces to do, that I'll want to interact with them. The servers in the rack, for the most part, I'll, I'll be programming to do um, specific tasks, and I don't need them to, I don't need to interact with it. I don't need to see what it's doing once it's coded, I just need it to run. So that's why a server rack is, um, is pretty useful for what I'm going to do. Um, and we'll get on to one of those tasks shortly. Just quick look at it. There's a, um, a component bus. So let's turn that off. Put that in here. Turn it back on again. Yeah, we're loading. And if I look here, I can actually have this thing starting to talk to more bits and pieces. That's the idea of a, uh, of a component bus. Alright. Do I need it? I don't think so. Do I want it there just for fun? Yes, probably. Um, so yeah, that's how to, to set up your server and get your, um, your server rack and get it up and running. Now servers themselves, you don't have to you know configure while it's in the rack. You can actually just right click on this. Here's one I prepared earlier. Wireless card, graphics card, hard disk, all that kind of thing. No component bus in here. And then I can just sort of take it, drop it in, and we're all good. Now, like I said, I don't have, um, I don't want more than one computer talking to this thing at the back. Now, you can sort of disable and enable it on the fly. That's fine. Okay, yep, cool. You can sort of do it on the fly. Um, to a certain extent, not completely, um, because any historical display won't come up. Um, next thing I want to look at is I want to look at something called a terminal server. All right, so I've got one here. Now, a terminal server is a very special kind of computer. What it allows you to do, I'll put this in here. Yep. And if I right click on it, I'm not getting any interface or anything like that. I can take a remote terminal. That's interesting. All right. <clears throat> and shift right click and that'll allow me to use it. Now it's not giving me anything because it's not actually bound to another server. Now the way you tie this non-interactive thing to another server is by saying, you know, I might want the terminal server to talk to this second server here. So what I do is I go to my case, left side is green, I want this to talk on green and I want that to talk on green. Alright, start it up. There we go. And you can see now, <coughs> like I've just right clicked on the, the blue light, it's a little bit dodgy. Uh, and you can see now I've got a little blue light that's appeared over here. I can connect multiple to remote terminals to the one server. And if I right click, you can see that I've got 
uh, <coughs> the interface available. So if I uh, say just do something quick, edit peanut, yep, good, save that, exit, list, I can see, you can see I've got a file named peanut that is visible via my remote terminal. Going back over here, list on this computer, and nothing appears. That's because the screen and keyboard is connected to the top server. This second server is connected to the remote terminal. Okay? So that's how, how they work. <coughs> now one of the things you might wonder is why you would go to you know the effort of, of setting up something like this. Now for, for me, this is a, a quick board that just sort of lists the number of computers and robots and other bits and pieces like that. And some of them have, say, uh, da, 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 two microcontrollers over here and two robots here. So I'm looking forward to using a fair bit of um, a fair bit of open, open computer stuff in my base. And a lot of them are going to have to talk to each other. I'll just set the time to to zero. Okay. Now. With networking, all right, I've got two methods of sending a message. All right, the the modem um, component will support two different um, methods to to send information to other computers. There is a broadcast method, and that will send a message to all of the network cards in range. So basically, everything's going everywhere. Or there's a more specific send command that will send information to a specified computer. Now the way you specify a computer is by giving it the address. If I go into Lua and say component.modem.address this is the address that I have to supply as a parameter go you know, from another computer in order to send a message to this one. All right? It's big and ugly. Now if I've got lots of computers all talking to each other and things like that, then all of a sudden I'm going to end up with a situation where I've got all of these bits and pieces all over the place, you know, multiple interactions between computers and all of that kind of stuff. And what you end up with is, give me a second, I'll take you to somewhere where I've set up a bit of a visual example. Okay, I've set this thing, this thing up as a bit of a visual example of what can happen when you've got computers talking to each other and no real structure involved. Each of the granite blocks represents a computer. Each of the wires represents a communication pathway that I'll, that I'll, I'll end up needing. And as you can see, you know, if I want to do something like um, you know, change this computer, then all of a sudden I've got to go to multiple places and change things over. If I want to add a new computer for something, then it's a lot more complicated. I've got to go figure it out, go to various places, add addresses, all of that kind of thing. It's quite difficult to manage. I think it's a much better idea to have my, my system of network communications look like this. All right, same number of computers, it's a much cleaner setup, all right? So basically, if I want to send a message from this computer to this computer, what I'll do is I'll send it to a central computer, this one, and then that central computer will route it off in the correct direction. So that means if I add a new computer, then you know I've really only got to update one location. If I want to change cards, which changes the address, I only have to change one location. Uh, it's just a much cleaner, you know, sort of way to go. It's I think I I prefer that to uh, to this spaghetti mess. Okay, so that's why I'm going to be using a server rack. One of these, like I've got three servers here. Um, one of them, its task will be simply to accept inbound messages and route them off to the correct computer. Um, that will clean up my um, my code all over the network quite a lot. A second one is just going to be there as a command line utility, so that if I want to, you know, send commands into the system uh, from from somewhere, I don't need to be uh, at a touchscreen controller or anything like that, I can simply use my remote terminal. I can enter a command like send message to 
uh, void or minor um, on something like that command doesn't exist because the the program doesn't exist but what that will do is it will send a message from from the command line server to the networking server the networking server will, will then route it off to another base that I have and turn the um, the void or minor that I've got on or off or whatever okay so a little bit of advice set you you know plan ahead for your networking if you're if you're thinking about doing lots of open computers if you're only doing a couple of things then something like that isn't really worth it and uh, yeah okay here's something else I should add I'm in the middle of writing some code for my network uh, network routing system and the the manual send program I'm not going to show you because um, yeah it's not really necessary but every now and again the the remote terminal for the terminal server locks up all right it stops responding and there is very little I can do about it apart from actually reboot the entire server okay uh, that's a little annoying but one of the good things about doing so and this is something that's unique to open computers as opposed to pretty much anything else I've come across is that open computers the mod will remember the state that everything is in when everything shut down so you know and that's not just a shutdown but it's also a chunk being up and unloaded or you know and then reloaded or whatever okay so this the server has just restarted I've only just logged in my uh, my terminal server is now functioning but if I go and look at the three servers that are uh, the three computers that I'm, I'm sort of working on at the moment what you can see is that all three of them have loaded back up to exactly where they were when I shut the system down um, this one is in the middle of editing uh, a program this one I'm just you know moving around uh, a custom library that I wrote this one I'm in the middle of doing some some actually some in uh, some Lua just running queries and things like that running little function calls and they've all come back exactly where they were when I left them and, and shut the server down very very awesome thing about open computers makes life so much easier so if you have to leave a chunk or you have to shut the server down don't worry you're not going to lose anything even if you're halfway through editing uh, the remote terminal program the only way I found to fix it at least on this particular version is to actually bounce the server okay no worries I'll get on with this and uh, show you where I'm up to you know and how my my little routing thing works when when it's finished okay we're back I've um, I've written my message router programming there's a lot of code here sorry about the resolution um, you guys have highlighted it to me that things are quite small but I need to do stuff like this to to be able to see what I'm doing um, so a lot of code a lot of bits and pieces going on uh, now in order to to get this to run when the server reboots all you have to do is just copy it to run dot lua all right so I'm copying it to the root um, and naming it as auto run dot lua list auto run dot lua reboot rebooting booting os blah 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 initializing message routing that's good to go um, I've also got the that's server number one server number two as you you remember I've um, I've hooked it up to the terminal server so my terminal server now has a utility called send um, that lets me send commands into manual commands into the message router um, I've put a little bit of work into it so if I just type in something it brings up a, a little help to tell me how to use my own program which is wonderful because I do have the brain of a sieve sometimes um, I can get a list of the valid destinations at the moment um, logging is on with this I can turn that on or off which is all wonderful I've tested it it's fabulous we're all good to go now all I need to do is uh, because this thing is communicating via wireless modem and I don't really need to see what it's doing 
or interact with it anyway, I can disconnect it. My message router thing is still going to work. Wonderful, we're all done. So that's the core of my network, ready to go. Uh, there are a couple of last things that I really want to you know, sort of mention in this episode because we are talking a bit about servers and networking. One of the things that you gain with Computercraft is the ability to send programs up to Pastebin. All right? Now you can't do that with a normal computer. In order to do that, you have to install this thing, an internet card, okay? That gives you all of the internet stuff and a whole pile of stuff that Computercraft doesn't. You can call HTTP addresses. Um, I shudder to think the amounts of things that you could do with with this particular card in your system because you do get um, you know fairly fairly good internet access. Now I'm pretty sure that is a tier three card. Let me just double check that. Open computers. All right, let's uh, let's just open this up. And where's our internet card? Card base. Uh, let me see now. Data card, data card, data card. We'll get to those in a moment. Internet card. No, it's a tier two. All right, cool. No worries. So you can you can put that in almost anything. The last thing I want to talk about is the one that we just ran over in a, a moment before. The data card. I'm not using any of these. I have no plans to use these. I just want to cover these off for the sake of completeness. The data cards give you a range of functionality that is pretty crazy when you think about where just you know sort of writing a few little programs in um, in Minecraft it gives you the ability to do a whole pile of encryption functions and things like that so on top of um, you know my little private network where I send and receive stuff to direct addresses I could actually go as far as you know using pretty serious level encryptions with public and private keys and stuff like that in order to encrypt my communication so that nobody could read what's going on, nobody can intercept my stuff, nobody can mess around with my computers, even if they get the right addresses and the right ports. Um, it is fairly crazy stuff and I can't believe they've actually included that in a in a computer mod for, for Minecraft. Um, I might play around with it at some point in the future. I might not. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover with the with the servers and modems. You know how to build them, you know the ins and outs, you know about terminals. Um, and we also covered off a fair bit on you know sort of designing your network. Now some people out there might say, look, you know, that's a lot of work to go to in order to, to manage your network. The reason I do it is because it avoids me having you know, like I was showing you before, that big spaghetti mess of messages going all over the place. This is a much more manageable system. Send it to a central computer, forward it on to the, to the, uh, to the destination from a central computer. Um, and the reason why I'm using a send command rather than a broadcast command is because if I used a, used a broadcast to, to do my bits and pieces, first of all, at the destination, well, every computer is going to receive every single message. That's a real pain because I have to receive, parse, and determine whether the message I've received is applicable to the computer that's receiving it. That's too much of a pain in the butt. I'd rather not do that. Using the, the send message to actually send things where they need to be, it, it actually saves a bit of work. Okay, oh, and the other thing is that um, there is a, a limit on the number of messages that can be sent and received via open computers. Uh, I think it's something like five messages a second or something like that. I can, I'll probably look it up and um, post it in the description of this video, but that is the first part of our, uh, our job list to do. Uh, where's my axe? I can take, grab my axe, I can say network manager, all done. Um, utility server with command line. I've got my first one there. I'll add more commands as I want. Terminal server to utility is also done. Um, I have an internet computer set up over here to allow me access to Pastebin. We'll, uh, we'll get rid of that one. 
And... All right, that'll do for the moment. All right, so next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to spend the entire episode talking about screens. Screens and graphics cards and other bits and pieces like that because Open Computers does include some awesome stuff. There is a bit more complicated stuff involved than there was in Computer Craft. We've got multiple objects that we need to deal with because of the existence of different screens and data cards. Oh, goodness me. So much fun. Have fun, guys. I'll talk to you later on. Bye!